Welcome here, everyone. I'm glad you all could show up to help show that we care to the family. Let's start by singing, This World Is Not My Home. No, this world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. They're all expecting me, and that's one thing I know. My Savior, pardon me, and now I onward go. I know you'll take me through, though I am weak and poor, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Just up in glory land, we'll live eternally. The saints on my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. What a day that will be. So there is coming a day when no heartache shall come, no more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. And I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, what a day, glorious day that will be. There will be no sorrow there, no more burdens to bear, no more sickness nor pain. No more parting over there, and forever I will be with the one who died for me. What a day, glorious day that will be. 
What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. And I look upon this face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, what a day, glorious day that will be. Welcome to each one that's come here today to uh, celebrate the life of Andrew, uh, Kendrew, and also to be uh, here to uh, have all the friends that are come over here. It's, it's amazing how many friends Jeff and Sharon have. And uh, you all came over here to, to show your sympathy with them and say welcome to each one. <clears throat> also those on, online, say welcome to those that are, and I imagine there's probably a number of them not watching online too. And uh, my name is Ben Duick. I'm the cousin to Sharon. And uh, it's... it's uh, uh, Occasion where we kind of think we would like to have it different than what we have it now, but it's it's the way it is, and uh, life is just going on. Even if Kendra is not here anymore, life will still be going on. I thought of reading a few verses out of uh, Job, uh, chapter fourteen, verse uh, one and two. It says, man that is born of a woman is a, f a few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. And um, I'm sure that uh, Jeff and Sharon feel like that way, that Kendra's been just a few short years with him, and he's gone. But it's not that we don't have no hope that uh, this life is, is, uh, is just for a short time and then it, it goes on. I'll also read a few verses out of Psalm four, uh, 39. First six verses. I said, I will take heed to my ways that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked is before me. I was done with silence. I held my peace even from good, and my sorrow was stirred. My heart was hot within me while I was musing the fire burned. Then spake I with my tongue, Lord, make me to know my end and the measure of my days, what it is that I may know how frail I am. Behold, thou hast made my days as an handbreadth and mine age as a nothing before thee. Verily, every man at his best stage is altogether vanity. Surely every man walketh in a vain show. Surely they are disquieted in vain. He heapeth up riches and knoweth not what shall be. What shall gather them? Or who shall gather them? It's, uh, <clears throat> uh, if, if we think about this psalm over here, uh, there is times that we don't really know what to say. And it, it's, it's a time like this that we don't really know what to say. And also, uh, I'm, I'm sure the family is also, if they're thinking about what uh, what has happened 
and and uh, if they if they think about things that that were and that have been and there's probably a lot of memories but their their memories will stay but but the person is gone and then we get to to uh, think about how short our life is well <clears throat> Kendra is gone and it, it doesn't uh, the destination that that he is uh, we don't know we don't we don't judge that where he's at but uh, we as uh, that are still alive we can we can think about how short our life could be it could be one of us in the in the casket over here and uh, really are we are we ready that's that's what the the uh, the thought is if, if we gather together in a in a house like this with with the morning uh, we uh, we have to think how short our life is. Lord, make me to know mine end and measure of my and the measure of my days, what it is that I may that I may know how frail I am. So really, we are we are just as frail as this as uh, as the life of Kendrew was. It, it happened all so quick, and uh, and we are we are just uh, right behind. So let's be ready. Let's kind of like think about like the verses we find in Ephesians uh, five fifteen and sixteen. See that that you walk circumspectly, not as fools but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. And uh, uh, <clears throat> probably uh, this. Uh, Time over here, we probably don't have a, a days that are evil. Just thinking about evil, it's more like uh, the days are short, and uh, and the world is uh, there's a lot of evil in this world. Let's walk not as fools but as wise to re to redeem the time, because the days are evil. And <clears throat> may we may we uh, uh, continue to to be a support to the family as uh, this is going to be a, a while at, uh, because it's, it's so sudden. And, uh, but all the support that you're showing over here, you're very welcome to come over here and, and uh, show the support. So let's uh, bow our heads for prayer. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we come before Thee again this afternoon. We thank You for all the wonderful times that that uh, you have given us, and also for the family as they reflect on life of, of Kenry, all the many things that he has done. Well, we thank you for the blessings, for the for the memories that that we can have, and Father. But I also we know that it's it's going to be a a hard road ahead for the family. We'll ask that you be with them, give comfort them, and give them grace as the days go on, as they will miss the, uh, the empty chair by the table, or if they would miss the work that they're doing. Father, be with them, help them. Give them grace to, to stand up for what is right, and be ready when you call us. All the rest of us that are over here, uh, honor the sound of, of my voice, would you give each one a blessing as we are here together and help us to, to uh, live for you. Because, Father, we know that our days are numbered. We are, we are the, the ones that are going to be... Uh, next who knows who will be but father help us to be ready we pray this in jesus name amen
Dear friends, thank you for showing your support to this dear family in this time of pain, of losing a child, losing a brother, losing a grandchild, and to many of us, losing a friend. Before I begin, I want to say a word to the family. What can I say? There's only one thing I can say to you. I will be praying for you. And may the God of all comfort bring you the comfort and the loss of your beloved son. You can be assured that you have friends here that will be thinking of you. And may God comfort you and guide you and bless you. This is not a journey any of us and any of you anticipate in life. But we know so little about the future. Death is sobering. No matter what your belief is, you realize something of a very serious nature has taken place. There is a loss. You may replace workforce, but you never replace a person. God builds people very uniquely. I was still a young boy when I remember attending my first funeral. It was my uncle. I remember most of nothing, nothing that was said apart the fact that there were a lot of tears. And my heart goes out to Kendrew's younger brothers. I pray that God will comfort you and that this memory will help you in life. That you would be strong in faith in God. As the writer of the song writes, Abide in me, fall fast the eventide. The darkness deepens, Lord, with me abide. When the other helpers fail and comforts flee, Help of the helpless, O oh, abide with me. May the Lord abide with you. I want to read a verse from Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1. It says, To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted. Today we are reminded again that there is a time to die. For Kendrew, the cold wind of death came so soon in life, so suddenly. And for many of us, the news came with a shock to us. As the dad wrote, quote, God has called our dear son, Kendrew, from this life. Life stopped, life ended on earth for Kendrew. There is a separation now, and this separation is painful. Because you will never hear his voice no more in the house, Kendrew will not come and take his spot at breakfast table anymore. He will not be somewhere where you can call on him. He will not come to the youth anymore. He will not play volleyball with the team anymore. You will not meet him this side of heaven, in this life again. And as we see through our tearful eyes, we see a young man so full of life, energy, and dreams, and now gone. And we ask ourselves, why now? Why here? And we cry, why? But the evening of September 24 was no surprise to God. 
God knew already. He had it already planned. Today, Kendrew is in God's hand. But God is speaking to us today. In Psalms 95, it says, Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. God wants to communicate with us directly. God is also God of your valleys. There's an old proverb that says, All sunshine and no rain makes a desert. Life is a mixture of good times and hard times, ups and downs, highs and lows, mountains and valleys. And today, I want us to know that God is also God of my valley and your valley, the God of my valleys. Even in the darkest day, God says, I'm there I'm there with you. In the Bible times, there was a king, king of Syria, and his army wanted to go against Israel, and they decided that they were going to depose Ahab. So the king of Syria lined up 32 nations to come against Israel. They came against Israel, and God miraculously gave Israel a victory and soundly defeat the king of Syria, and his allies. Well, the following year, the Syrians decided that they were going to try it again. They were going to come back and try to take over Israel. But in the reviewing the previous battle from the earlier year, all of the Syrian generals came up with a different plan. Here's what it says in 1 King chapter 20. The Syrian military advisors went to the king, in verse 23, and the servants of the king of Syria said unto him, their gods are gods of the hills, therefore they are stronger than we, but let us fight against them in the plains, and surely we shall be stronger than they. As they explained, Israel's god are god of the hills. At the last time they fought, a year ago they lost. It said, we lost them in the hills, and that's why they defeated us. That was their rationale. But if we fight them in the valleys, we are, where they are weak, we will defeat them there. So they changed plans, and they made a few other strategic things. And instead of fighting the Israelites up in the hills, they were going to fight them on flat ground. And there we can, there we can easily outnumber them. Their gods protected them in the hills, but we will beat them in the valleys. So they adjusted their battle plan and they bring a huge army back to Israel. In fact, the Bible says the Syrian forces covered the whole countryside. In 1 Kings 20, verse 27, it says, And the children of Israel were numbered and were all present and went against them. And the children of Israel pitched before them like two little flocks of kids. But the Syrians filled the countryside. So the Israelites looked like two little flocks of goats. This is very imbalanced. But that's not the end of the story. Then defeat looked inevitable, but God had something to say about this. In verse 28, it says this, And there came a man of God, spake unto the king of Israel, and said, Thus saith the Lord, because the Syrians have said, The Lord is God of the hills, but he is not God of the valleys. Therefore will I deliver all this great multitude into thy hands, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So God says this, because the, Syrian, the Syrians think that God was only the God of the hills and not the God of the valleys, that God was going to give them victory over this huge army. So everyone will know that I am the Lord. Now, I want to summarize this. God is God 
not just in your mountaintop experience. Because he's the God of the valleys too. God says, I am the God of the valleys. I'm not just the God of the good times in your life. I'm not just God of the happy times in your life. I'm not just God when everything's going smooth. I'm the God of the valleys too. May we know He is the Lord, and God has a plan and a purpose for each one of us, and God has a plan for this too. Psalms 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the shadow, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Now that word valley got me to thinking. When a tragedy happens like this, where Kendrew's life ended so suddenly, it is like that we are in this valley and the shadow of death is over us. But fear no evil. God is also God of the valley, and he will be with you. In the darkest times, in the times of despairs, in the times of defeat, God is there. Just call out to him. Because the truth is, most of your life and my life aren't lived on mountaintops. When you're in a mountaintop experience, the view is great. They give you a great view, but mountain peaks are far and few. And most of the time, you live your life in the valley. Some are inevitable. It's normal part of life. Valleys are a part of life. God's plan for your life actually contains both hills and valleys. And there's, that's part of his plan. Let's look at the scripture in Deuteronomy 11, verse 11. It says, But the land, whether ye go possess it, is a land of hills and valleys, and drinketh water of the rain of heavens. So God says here, the promised land that you're about to enter, or can I say, or Christian life, or the Christian life that you are about to enter, is a land of hills and valley. But what does that mean? It means that when you're in the center of God's will, valleys are part of the plan that come and you're into your life. And Hosea 2 verse 15 says, I, the Lord, will turn the valley into a door of hope. And other translation says, into a gateway of hope. That is a comforting verse. When your joys has all dried up, and there are just tears, because you're grieving, Psalms 84 says, Blessed are those whose strength comes from the Lord. We can find comfort in suffering. And Romans 5 says, Knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. That kind of hope does not disappoint us. A lot of kind of hopes in the world are, are false hopes. But this kind of hope does not disappoint us. This is not the end of the story, friends. You're going to be rewarded for being a faithful Christian if you are faithful to Christ. In the valley of fear, in the valley of grief, in the valley of brokenness, and in the valley of trouble, and in all the other valleys that are in the scriptures, 
yet they are producing in us an eternal glory, which will last forever and is greater than anything that we can imagine. For our present troubles are quite small in relation to eternity. Very recent, my wife and I were at Jeff and Sharon's house. And Jeff quoted this exact verse, and I'll read it. In 2 Corinthians 4, verse 17. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Then verse 18. For our light afflictions, which is for a moment, worketh in us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. As we go through valleys, but there is a difference between the valley of a believer and the valley of a non-believer. For a Christian, for a follower of Christ, going through the valley is different from a non-believer. Not because of the absence of the shadow, but because of the presence of the shepherd. I will be with you. The Lord is my shepherd. He will give me his promise and of power and purpose and protection and peace in his presence. I don't know what kind of valley you're going through. Some of you are going through the deepest valley of darkest, the darkest valley in your life. And I have no doubt about that. But regardless of the valley, the type of valley, there is a shepherd. But you got to decide to make him your shepherd. The Lord is not your shepherd unless you ask him to be your shepherd. Unless you surrender your life to him and believe in him. So there is one last valley that you need to go through, and it is the valley of Joel 3, verse 14. Multitudes, yes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the day in the valley of decisions. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decisions. And you're in it right now. Before you knew, God knew, that you would be here today listening to this message. So God could say this to you. This is your moment of decision. This is your valley of decision. You can decide for me or against me because it's going to make your decision is going to decide everything else in your life. Make that wise choice. You can see before you life can end so suddenly. You're in the valley of decisions. Whether you're listening on live stream, you're in the valley of decisions, for the day of the Lord is near. What are you going to decide? Will you decide to say, God, I'm going to follow you, not my plan anymore. I'm going to have you as the manager of my life, not me anymore. I'm going to have you as the good shepherd. If you do not know the way of the cross, make that choice today and follow Jesus Christ. And if you know the way of the cross, but you're not in close relationship with the Lord, come back into that close relationship with him. 
He wants to be your shepherd. For closing, I want to read John 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Let's pray. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we know that valleys are part of life. And as we are weeping and grieving in the valley of grief, help us to remember that we are not alone in this valley. You are also God of the valley. And that when I go through it, you go with me and you'll be with me. And I pray for this family as they are going through this dark valley that you would continue to wrap your arms, your loving arms around them and comfort them. And also I pray, Lord, for all those that are here and those that are listening in. We stand today in the valley of decisions. Help us to decide today to live for Christ. And help us to rededicate our lives if we have slipped away and have start living carelessly. We know that our life is not secured. It is the grace of God that we are here today. Help us and help each one of us to choose to decide to live for you. I just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Job 1.21b Kendra Dante Lowen was born August 4, 2008 in Shawnee, Oklahoma, to Jeff and Sharon Lowen. He passed away Sunday, September 24, 2023, at the age of 15. He started out rather small and scrawny. However, as he grew, so did his vibrant spirit and boundless energy. In his first year, he was a fussy baby and kept his mom up at night. At the age of two, he began to express himself and proudly called himself Nano. At this time, he often sang the first verse and chorus of On Jordan's Stormy Banks by himself. By the age of two and a half, he could already speak in full sentences, showcasing his remarkable early development. He has broken one leg and both arms at three separate times, the only one of the boys who broke any bones. Kendra mostly enjoyed his school days and proved to be a quick learner. He made numerous friends along the way, for he was an outgoing individual, full of life and ready with a quick smile. Although his life was tragically short, it was a life lived to the fullest, one that radiated with wholehearted enthusiasm. He was a hardworking young man who took pleasure in farm work, always eager to be behind the wheel of the tractor. When given job choices, he preferred roofing at sunrise sheds. In the lawn care business, Dustin and Kendra made a great team. Kendra had a number of hobbies that he pursued with dedication and passion. In his spare moments, 
you could find him practicing roping, whether it was a Jake steer or a stray piglet or calf. He enjoyed braiding bull whips and gonslings with paracord. He shared a love for fishing with his dad, uncles, and brother, and went on numerous fishing trips in Manitoba. Deer hunting was one of his cherished pastimes. He shot five whitetail, his first one at age nine. Ultimately, God allowed a large buck to take him into eternity. He is preceded in death by one brother, Braden Chante Lowen, in infancy, and his grandfather, Alvin Lowen. He leaves behind his loving parents, Jeff and Sharon Lowen, and four cherished brothers, Dustin Kyle, Joshua Ryan, Branton Mathay, and Travin Jeriah, all from Payton. His grandparents, Norman and Alvira Duick of Payton, and Irene Lowen from Manitoba, Canada. He will be fondly remembered by many cousins, friends, aunts, and uncles who held a special place in his heart. Kendra's legacy is one of a vibrant energy, unwavering determination, and a love for life that touched everyone he met. Though his time with us was short, the impact he made is immeasurable. He is greatly missed and will always be in our hearts, his loving family. Let's sing on Jordan's stormy banks. No, on Jordan's stormy banks I stand and cast a wishful eye to Canaan's fair and happy land where my possessions lie.
Okay, we have come to the close of this service and we have some announcements to make here. So from, from here we, we will go to the Boli Cemetery for the burial and uh, we'll, we'll follow the hearse in the, in the procession and you can park on the, on the road there, uh, on either side of the road. Just try to make sure that there's enough room to uh, pass through there to, uh, to the church parking lot. And then uh, after, after the burial, we'll have the, uh, everyone is welcome for a meal over at the Payton Baptist Church. And then for, for here for now is uh, the ushers are going to usher the people by the casket here. So they, they're going to start with the youth here. They're going to walk by here and then walk um, maybe out through this door. Is that, oh, out that door. They'll just walk by here and out through that door. So they're going to try to empty that side first and then start on this side and maybe have them walk around and come back in the middle here. And so during that time, we'll have a group of singing here. Thank you.